Yeah, here we go again, violating our own rules for the YouTube channel. The Vancouver Canucks are going to play the St. Louis Blues again in the second part of, what is it called, a home and home? Is that what it is? Yeah, home and home, I believe, where the Canucks are going to be playing the St. Louis Blues. They just played the St. Louis Blues two days ago. They lost to the St. Louis Blues in a game that even though the score was somewhat tight at moments, I mean... It was 1-0, and then it was 2-0, and then the Canucks couldn't really do anything to get any consistent offense on the board, aside from Brad Hunt doing Brad Hunt things. But the Vancouver Canucks lost against St. Louis two days ago on Monday, and they kind of deserve to lose. They're playing again here today, in Rogers Arena this time, and I wanted to focus on Connor Garland in specifics, because there has been a growing conversation about this guy and what he has been able to provide for the team. Now, a lot of this has to do with Bruce Boudreaux's comments from after the St. Louis game on Monday. Here's the quote. He didn't play very well on Connor Garland, and I need more out of him. You've got to use your teammates, and I think he could have passed the puck. He carried it a little too much, but he was one of the forwards I think did not have a very good game. This was kind of the push that a lot of fans needed to really start conversing about this guy. And the reason why I say it like that is because I do think this Connor Garland thing has slowly been creeping up in the subconscious of many Canucks fans and media that says that he just hasn't been as good as he needs to be in order for this team to win as many games as they could. Connor Garland is a player that I think a lot of Canucks fans could agree on is a good player. He's one of the better ones on this team when it comes to his physicality, his skills, how he's able to swoop and swerve around in the offensive zone, especially in the corners while controlling the puck. He's got a feisty nature to his game. He's got some puck skills. Even though he's only 5'10", 165, he's making just under $5 million for the next four years. And a lot of Canucks fans would go out there and say, yeah, that's a pretty good cap hit right there. He's got 35 points in 63 games, on pace for 43 points in 77 games. Definitely not bad numbers, but he does play a little bit more than the numbers would indicate. However, if you go over to Connor Garland and you see where he is in segmented parts of the season, Connor Garland has not scored a goal since February 24th against the Calgary Flames. That was 17 games ago. Actually, was it 17? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah, so 17 games ago, Connor Garland had his last goal, and that wasn't really that much of an important goal. If you remember, that was the goal that made it 6-0 in a game where the Canucks already stomped the Flames. You then go even further back. There was the Anaheim game, 18 games ago, that goal wasn't really too important either because the Canucks were already losing by a ton. The game before that one, though, was pretty significant. It was a tie-breaking goal against San Jose. Connor Garland hasn't scored a goal in this long. He's had a whole bunch of shots. He's got 34 shots in the month of March itself. And... When it comes to just how he's been playing as of late, I think we've really started to enter the slump territory. This is kind of not the best version of Connor Garland that we have been expecting to see in these past few weeks, but it only really took until Bruce Boudreaux's comments on Monday to get people sort of thinking about that more, I feel. When it comes to the sentiment that Garland has been holding onto the puck a little bit too much, not really using his teammates as much as he could... When you really think about it like that and you start watching the tape, it becomes a lot more evident that that sort of has been the case for a few games now. Not in particular just the St. Louis game on Monday, but Connor Garland is so skilled when it comes to controlling the puck, possessing the puck, and making sure that opponents are not able to take the puck away from him, especially in the corners. He's got that little move where he accelerates with the puck forward, and then he quickly drops it back on the backhand while spinning around, and the other defender gets tripped out because he thinks that Garland is going to keep on going forward, but he doesn't. He's got that move for days. He's got these shifty puck transition abilities that allow him to hold onto it for an extended amount of time. It's just when you see what he does with it afterwards, it's like, okay, there's a passing option out in front. Okay, there's a lane to the net that's open. Okay, you're kind of trapping yourself in the corner there, Garland. It's kind of getting you into trouble here. And I feel like as Garland has progressed throughout the year, that scoring touch that he had, that very legitimate scoring touch, by the way, where the guys seem to score like every other game, 
Because that's been fading away, I feel like Garland has been playing himself into his own head a little bit. Where now it's like, okay, he's thinking about it. He's thinking about the fact that he hasn't scored in 17 games. He's thinking about how the points haven't necessarily been there. And as a result, he's trying a little bit too hard to force those points onto the board. Where he's trying to find the perfect opportunity to find a lane, but it's not necessarily there. And he can't really force it in the same way he did before. That physicality was so prevalent in previous games under Travis Green, but not necessarily under Boudreaux, especially in the past few weeks. In fact, here's a stat I wanted to take a look at from Alistair, buddy of mine on Twitter. He posted Connor Garland's 82-game point pace under Travis Green. He is on pace for 59 points and 23 goals. Under Bruce Boudreaux, he is on pace for 37 points, which is a significant drop-off. In fact, there is a similar sentiment to be had with Niels Hoaglander, who's actually producing less as well under Bruce Boudreaux. And so for Connor Garland, I'm not too sure if it's the coaching change specifically or the strategies that Boudreaux has been implementing within this club or how Travis Green would use this guy, whatever. It's just a conclusion to be made that Connor Garland under Bruce Boudreaux, especially in the past few weeks, is not the same Connor Garland that played however many games under Travis Green. There isn't that same effectiveness here, which is a shame to see, because I think a lot of Canucks fans could agree that Garland is a fan favorite. He's somebody who works so hard, and he has worked really hard to get the reputation he has in the city. I think it was that Detroit game where he scored that very nice NHL 21 glitch goal earlier on in the year. I believe it was the 3-1 game in October that kind of had everybody on his side early on. That was the game where it was like, okay, this guy is good. He is legit. And now because of the slump he's been going on, we've started up conversations again as to whether or not the Dylan Genther, Oliver ekman Larson, Beagle Erickson trade was worth it, whether or not that was a profitable move for the franchise, and whether or not the money would have been worth it in the short term, long term, etc. There's another video topic to be had there, so I'm not going to get into that too deeply in this video, but I'll just say this. Tonight, the Canucks are playing the Blues again. Tonight, Connor Garland is going out there again. He's skating on the line with Pearson and JT Miller. Miller is a very good hockey player, and he's very consistent. Unfortunately, Miller has not been able to get Garland that first goal in 17 games in this entire stint that they've been playing together. However, there were those comments made by Boudreaux the other day, to which Connor Garland has responded from today's media availability, that it doesn't bother him. That's Boudreaux's job, to go out there and critique the players. So... If Bruce Boudreaux went out there and said to the media, yeah, Garland, this and that and the other thing, I wonder what he said to him in private. I wonder what he said to him behind closed doors in the locker room. Hey, this part of your game, when you go into the corner, you spin around a few times and that's great, but you don't get the puck off quick enough. You don't allow the play to move forward past those individual stints in the corner there. And as a result, you're getting shut down. Your shots are coming from low danger. Your shots are coming from wide angles. And even though... You're getting, let's see here, the shot charts. Five shots against the Blues, two shots against the Stars, three against Minnesota, three against Colorado, three against Buffalo, eight against Detroit the other day. You're still going out there with zero goals. Now, that's not to say that he hasn't had looks. He had that one opportunity in the Blues game where he had that one time where he absolutely hammered it off the post. So there's definitely a luck element to this as well. It's just... Something's got to give here, right? It's been so long. The guy's been getting so many wide-angle shots. He's finally had that wake-up in the media. Now everybody's talking about him and the slump that he's been on. If there's a game to go out there and break that mold, if there's a game to go out there and score a goal, today's that game. You got the home fans in Rogers Arena. You're playing off against Vili Husso, apparently, it looks like, because the St. Louis Blues loved how he played against Vancouver on Monday. So, your time is up. My time is now. Connor Garland, go out there, score a goal. And if he doesn't score a goal, then hey, we'll say the same thing about the next game and the game after that, and hopefully at the end of the season he's got a lot more goals than 14 on the season. Hey, he started off the year pretty hot under Travis Green. He's ending the year off pretty cold. Let's see if he can turn things around. Let's say he gets 20 goals. He's at 14 right now. Can he get six goals in the last however many games the Canucks have? 16 games? That's not that bad of a pace, right? 16 over 6 multiplied out by 82. That is a 30-goal pace, but I mean, you gotta go out there and hope for some good things to end off the year, right? 
Let me know all your thoughts in the comments section below about Connor Garland and the slump that he has been having. Do you think this is a permanent thing? Do you think this is just like the Elias Pettersson slump, where in the beginning parts of the season, he was really cold, not hitting the net. He was getting points, like he was still at like half a point a game, but there were still so many concerns because we knew he was capable of more. For Connor Garland, do you see a similar thing? Do you see him fizzling out and maxing out as a 40-point player for the Canucks? Or can you see him becoming a little bit more than that, like a lot of Canucks fans thought he would be when they started out watching him in October. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this with Trolls 99. And bye. <laughs>